Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to So So Lounge. Today we're going to be talking about, and I'm going to be showing you, how to transfer your pattern marks onto your fabric before you start to sew. Now today I'm working with McCall's 8031, which is a level three learn to sew pattern. The learn to sew series from McCall's has more instructions to help you learn how to sew. Level three is gonna be the hardest one that they have. And this pattern includes three different variations. There is a sleeve, there is a notch collar, and there are buttonholes. There are also pockets on variation C, which is the one that I'm going to be doing. And it's gonna be a little bit more complicated than other patterns that are level one or level two. But this is a really good pattern to learn how to transfer marks. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. And the whole point of transferring your pattern marks is to have a really clear guide of where you need to put certain pieces as you progress through the garment construction process. So like I said, there's a sleeve in this. We have to mark the make the marks on the sleeve to be able to put it into the armhole. There are pockets that go on the front uh, chest area of the dress. We need to know how to line those up so they're even on both sides. There is a um, pleat in the back because there's a yoke on this type of dress, which means that, you know, we have to make sure that's all lined up. All of these things are going to make your garment look better. And by taking the time to make sure that you transfer all the marks exactly where they need to be, you'll have a more successful sewing experience. So today we're going to start by looking at the pattern instructions and kind of going over just the general information that they provide. And then we're going to go into closer detail of actually marking some of these patterns so you can see the way I do it and the way that I think works the best. Let's go in for a closer look. To get started we're going to take a look at the instructions and what the pattern actually has to say about markings and how to transfer them. So this is just the first page. It kind of has the general overview of the different styles, the different pieces, what supplies you need, how to choose the right size, and then it goes into the different pattern markings. Let me fold this back. So as you can see, those are the different markings and there are different lines. So the dot and dash lines will include the cutting lines. And then the arrow line with the arrow is always the grain line. And then you may have some center fold lines. There is a center front line on the front panel. And then there are an assortment of dots um, large and small circles, I call them dots generally, triangles and squares. And so they're going to be on different parts of the pattern pieces to do correspond with their, their partner. So a triangle is going to be up on the shoulder. That is going to be related to the collar. The squares on the front are going to be for the pockets. And then there's a side pocket if you're going to do that. I'm actually omitting it, but there's some larger dots down here if you want to put an inseam pocket in. Now, if you keep going on the pattern, we will get to the transfer of the marking instructions. So the very first thing is going to be notches. I always clip my notches when I cut out my pattern. So my fabric is all cut with the pattern pieces still pinned to the top and I cut my notches first and then I go on and transfer the individual markings. So they have different ways to do this. With the symbols, you can use a, a pin and mark it. That's what they suggest. Um, they also recommend that you mark all the stitch and fold lines. I don't do that. I just line everything up. It's all five eighths of an inch. It's just extra work. And um, one suggestion they do have is to label the wrong side of the fabric with a little piece of tape. And that's kind of it. There's, there's not a lot about it. Um, the instructions for the different supplies is you have a water soluble marking pen and um, carbon and tracing wheel. That's, that's kind of it. So you're just kind of supposed to figure out what you're supposed to do to transfer these markings on your own. And they have, you know, that one's using a pen. This one's using the tracing wheel and a piece of carbon paper. But today we're going to go into more detail about how to do this successfully. The very first thing we need to do before we start transferring any marks is make sure that we have the right tools to transfer marks. Now, I think it's a great idea to take one of the scrap pieces of fabric that you have. Um, this way you don't throw away scraps, so you can do this. Um, just take one of your scraps and test out different marking tools on your particular fabric to see what works best. 
I have a variety of marking tools. Some work better for different types of fabric than others. Um, this is kind of a textured cotton. There's kind of like, um, the weave is kind of, there's like a little slub in it. So it, it has more texture than most of the things. It's not like a smooth, tight, plain weave. And I have used a variety of things, which you can't see because they don't show up. Best is gonna be this white chalk pencil that is just some generic, I think I got this at a three pack in Joann's. Um, there's a pink one and a blue one that go with it. Um, just cheapy, but that's what's marking. So that's the one we're gonna use for the pencil part of it. And then um, as far as tracing paper goes, I am using Sarl Wax Free Transfer Paper. Now this comes in a variety of colors. I'm gonna be using the white one and I have already tested it out on my fabric and it does show up. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I found that this is one of the better wax tracing papers. You can get it on Amazon. It's a little bit more expensive than the transfer paper you can buy at Joann's or at other fabric stores, but this one tends to work really well. Um, sometimes those don't, but once again, it does depend on your fabric. So you might wanna have a variety of different types of tracing papers and different marking devices so you can use what works best for your fabric. Other thing you're gonna need is a tracing wheel. Um, it, it just like looks like a tiny pizza cutter. Um, you just need that so we can transfer the straight lines very easily. This will be used for the darts and any kind of stitch lines that we need to transfer. And we will be using it with the carbon paper. I also have um, some blue painter's tape to just mark the wrong side of the garments, um, the pattern pieces. My fabric is very distinctive, so even though it's the same color, you can tell which side is the right side and which side is the wrong side, but I'm gonna be using the blue painter's tape so we can all follow along together. And make sure your notches are all in and that your pattern pieces are all nice and smooth, and we are going to start transferring. Now, I don't start with any particular piece. I just, I have everything laid out here kind of in groups. So we're just going to start where we can. Now, at the top of the sleeve, there is always a single dot. And then you have notches on your sleeve to indicate what part of the sleeve it is. So there's one notch on the front side of the sleeve, and two notches on the back side of the sleeve. Remember that when we're sewing, um, side seams together, they have two notches. When we're sewing a back seam together, there are gonna be three notches. And if it's a front seam, there would only be one notch. So anything that's one notch is always the front, two notches is always the back. Um, unless it's a center back, then it's three notches. So there is always going to be dots at the top of a sleeve cap. And the sleeve cap is this part of the pattern. So we have to make sure we transfer those dots because later when we insert the sleeve, we wanna line them up and we have to gather along that seam line to make the sleeve go into the armhole. And they're gonna be dots that correspond on the armhole. We get everything all lined up and then the sleeve goes in like magic. So what I like to do when there are dots or small circles, large circles, however you wanna, whatever you wanna call it, is I take tracing paper and make sure that the side that's got the chalky stuff on it is on folded out because we're going to slip this between the into the inside of the pattern and mark at the same time and the way that I like to do this is with a pencil or you can do it with a any kind of a pencil really it doesn't have to be a chalk pencil but I am going to mark with a circle the big circle first I'm going to hold my fabric and then when you open up the pattern piece, you can see that there are marks on the inside. So let's go in for a closer look. All right, so this is the large dot. I kind of tore it up when I was messing with it, but so you can see where the, the chalk, the transfer paper has marked. So we just lined everything up, marked it with our chalk pencil. So you will have a mark on the right side, obviously, but then it's also gonna be on the inside where you need it to be. And then we are going to just move this chalk paper, the transfer paper in further in so that then we can transfer the other marks. So you don't have to press too hard and you don't have to go through the paper. We just wanna make sure that the mark transfers to the inside of the garment. 
Let's see if there's one on the other side. Yes, there it is. If you want it to be a little bit darker, you can always go back in with your chalk pencil, but as long as you can see it, you're gonna be good. So now let's move that over. We have one more down here. I am making the top part of the dress in a medium, and then it gets a little bit wider through the hips, but um, so you can see how everything transfers. So I think that's much easier than using the pen system just because then you know that everything is exactly where it needs to be. Whenever I transfer the circle marks or the dot marks, I always use this method. So that's kind of standard for any of those types of markings. Now, next is going to be a different type of marking. So this is going to be for the darts and we're still using the tracing paper, but this time we are going to use the tracing wheel instead of just using the pencil to transfer the the paper. Now, I keep referring to this as the chalk, chalk marks and all that because if you touch this paper, you're going to have chalky fingers. So just keep that in mind. Um, don't sew in your good clothes if you don't want to get chalk on them by accident. But there is a chalky residue, so that's the side you want to have folded to the outside. So once you slip it between your pattern pieces, like I'm doing here, make sure everything stays smooth. There we go. And that everything's lying completely flat with all of your pattern pieces and that your transfer paper is between the the two layers of fabric so it will be marking on the wrong side next you're going to grab your tracing wheel and i always hold my fabric pretty tight while i'm using the tracing wheel because i want to make sure that dart is lined up where it needs to be so i just kind of start in the middle and roll towards the end of the dart and then i go back out towards the end of the dart. And then there's a lot of, lot of dart marks on this. So um, that's, that's what I do. And then we go in and we check and make sure it's transferred. I'm pressing hard enough and that's all working. Let's go in for a closer look. All right, so here is the close-up view. And as you can see, if we open up our fabric, you can see that first line um, of the transfer that has, the mark has transferred and it's down there on the bottom too. So we're just gonna slip that fabric back in, piece back in between the fabric. Now make sure that if you're making an extra small, um, everything's lined up. Obviously if you're making an extra small, you're not gonna have all the seam allowance down here, but just find the corresponding marking and then that's the one you're gonna go with. So medium is going to be, start there. So it's gonna be this line and I'm just gonna roll out towards the end and then I'm going to roll back. Let's see how I'm straightening out the fabric to make sure everything still lines up. And you just wanna get a nice clean line on top of that actual line that we're transferring. And let's take a look. Good job, I went off a little bit there, but obviously it's this one that's a little bit straighter one. Let's see if it's down there. Yes, awesome, perfect. So then the next thing I like to do is go in and transfer these dot marks because sometimes it's easier to match those up to get started and then fold along the actual lines to make the dart. So I'm just gonna go in with my chalk pencil, make those dots. Here's the one for the medium. And there's the other one. And then once again, you can go in, you can see they're kind of the bigger markings on there. That didn't transfer great to the bottom. So I'm gonna go and press a little bit harder. Make sure you double check everything before you go on because maybe you don't press, you didn't press hard enough and um, that way you don't realize it down the road once you're putting it together and like, oh no, where did this go? There we go. So now you can see my dots are there. I've got the one at the end and everything is lined up. So let's keep going. So I am going to be making version C, which means I have to transfer these markings on the top of piece number one to put the pocket in the right place. Now, this is the actual pattern. You can see the close up of these pockets that are on the, the upper bodice area of the dress. And we wanna make sure that the, pa the pattern marks are transferred to the right places because we don't want those pattern, those pockets looking wonky and not being straight and symmetrical because that looks funny and it's gonna make your dress look weird if one pocket's a little higher or not quite as straight as the other. So to do this, 
we are going to be sewing the pockets to the front side of the dress, so we need to transfer the marks to the front side of the dress. This is one of those rare times where we're gonna do it that way. Now, I'm going to open up my transfer paper because I don't want it transferring to the back of the pattern piece, and I'm gonna flip it over so that the chalky side is down against my garment. And if you have a big enough piece of transfer paper, you could might be able to fold it so that it fits in for you know both sides so we can do the front and the back at the same time but mine is not that big so we're gonna have to just do it this way now just like before um honey just woke up from a nap and is shaking that's what that weird noise is so first i'm going to draw the line that i need to stitch the top flap of the pocket on with so i'm on the medium line i'm going to just hold everything keep that straight and go across to that little box and then next, I'm going to just kind of color in. You can see I'm just kind of going across. You can't really see it, but I know that's what I'm doing. So I'm just coloring in the square at either end of that dashed line because I know that is going to be a crucial marking for my pattern piece. And then next, I want to come down to these dots, the large circles and small circles, which is going to be, I don't know what those are for. We'll figure it out once we get to that part of the pattern, but we do need to transfer them because it does say 4C, 4C. So we know that that is some aspect of where we're putting the pocket in relation to the flap. So I'm gonna go to the medium circle, it's this third one, and I'm just gonna kind of color over it and make sure that it's going to transfer with some pressure. Now remember, we're just transferring this down to one layer, so it's not so bad. And then we want the middle one, one, two, three, which is also gonna be medium. So now we can take out our paper. I'm actually gonna unpin this here. You can see how you can see the white transferred to the actual pattern pieces. I'm gonna remove these. So you can see that now we have transferred, and I pressed a little too hard, um, just make sure you don't transfer all your chalk marks everywhere. It's okay though. It washes out, so there's no problem. Um, you can see that I've transferred my markings for my pocket. Um, that's for the flap, that's for the pocket, and then everything's gonna line up the way it's supposed to. And I'm gonna pin this piece back because next I'm going to do the back. So to do this, I'm going to make sure the chalky side is facing up. I'm gonna slide this all under my fabric so it's on the table underneath. So we're gonna be marking the right side of the other piece of the front panel. And I'm just gonna repeat the whole process. So I'm just gonna go over the marks and then I'm going to color in the boxes. And if you tear your boxes while you're doing this, that is fine. Um, you know, if you're using multi-size patterns and you might use this for someone else, then just be aware of that when you transfer marks next time. Now let's flip this over and see. And we have a lighter version down here. I might go back in and um, just color all of those in to make sure that everything is where it needs to be. Actually, let's go back and mark it from the front again. And I'll just press harder this time. So there's our line. And I don't care if I tear this, so. Um, okay, let's see. There we go. That's much better. We're gonna be able to see that and work with those markings. They are all in the right place. And now we will be able to put the pocket where it's supposed to be on both sides of the front piece of the dress. The last marking I wanna do, which I normally do not do, but since we are working with a placket and buttons, so as you can see, all the designs have the, the marking of the, the dress, so where it's sewn, but then you also have the buttons lined up on the center front. So there's a separate piece um, to mark all those buttonholes, which I believe we are gonna have to line up with the center front once we get to that stage of construction. So I am gonna mark the center front, and because this is going to be, um, we're just gonna put this on the inside of the garment, Actually, no, we're gonna put this on the outside of the garment. But because I'm near the edge, I have to see which side, there we go, that's the chalky side. 
I can fold the tracing paper over and slide it in. So I'm gonna take that pen out and I have my tracing paper folded so that I have can mark both of the front sides at the same time. Now I don't know which side we're putting the buttons on, so I'm just gonna mark both sides of them. Usually the button holes go on the right side. So I guess technically we could just do that, but let's just have the center front marked on both pieces in case that is something we're gonna need to know at a later point in time. Because once we take these pattern pieces off, then we're not going to go back and put them, put them back. So I am just going to kind of start here on this part of the line and go down the center front. And then I'm going to go down in this part. We can remove our paper, see that it's marking. It doesn't have to be a perfect straight line just because um, you know, we are going, I mean, it'll be a straight line, but it doesn't have to be a, a solid line because we're going to be moving down the front of the garment. So let me scoot this back into the thing. And you can just continue down the whole front because the buttons do go all the way down the front. And in case we need to line everything up, we will have our center front line. And there we go. So as I'm gonna stop right there, I think that's enough to get it in and let's check the back and we've got the line on the back. So we are good to go and we have the markings for piece one all done. If you are gonna put in a side pocket, then there are additional circles down here. I ran out of fabric and had to cut the pocket. Oh, one more thing. So the last markings that we need to transfer. Wow, I'm like totally messing up. So we also have a sleeve marking over here that we need to transfer. So we're gonna do that, this top part of the pattern I've totally neglected. So first we've got the markings for the collar, which are gonna be these triangles and in combination with these circles, small circles. So I am just gonna put that on the inside of my garment. And just like before, I'm just gonna use the pencil to mark everything. You don't actually need to use a pencil that would write. You could use like a dull pencil or like a pen, whatever you want, just to transfer those marks. A stylus of some sort. Okay, so now we have, oops, you know what? I think my chalk's on the inside. Yes, do that again. So I get all my chalk, chalky side out. We're just gonna go back over this again, making sure the triangle is in the right spot. Doing the medium circle as well. And there are our marks that have all transferred. And then last but not least, even though I keep forgetting it, is the small circle over here for the sleeve. And this will help us get everything lined up when we go put in the sleeve into the armhole. And once again, we're doing a medium. I don't think that's quite in there far enough. Make sure everything is lined up and in there flat and so that your dot is gonna be, have transfer paper under it once you do mark it. Okay, so there we go and there's the other one. So now piece number one is done. We have transferred all those markings. We're just gonna put it in, out of the way and move on. So the last big marking we need to make sure that we do on these pieces are the center back pleat. Now you may be thinking like, uh, what's a pleat? We're going to be connecting the yoke to the top of the back and that is going to make it have a seam. So that's a yoke up there at the top and you can see that there looks like there's something in there underneath and that's a pleat to fit this whole top part of the dress into that yoke. So there's gonna be a little pleat underneath and we need to make sure we mark that so everything lines up with the yoke and all of that will work together. Now this piece is on the fold because the center back is one piece. So we are going to stick this inside, make sure your chalky side is out, get it all lined up with your pleat. Now, 
With a pleat, we're going to be folding from the inside to the out. There's a little arrow showing you the direction that you're going to do that. So if you want to mark that arrow, you can um, to make it a little bit easier for you. And additionally, if you want to mark the whole pleat, you can mark the sides as well. You don't just need to go from whatever size you're doing up. You don't have to do this bottom part because that's a different different pleat. So now I'm going to mark my small circle, which is on the closest to the fold. And then I'm going to mark my large circle over here. And then I want to make sure that my marks all transferred. And there you can see that everything transferred for the pleat. So now that is ready to go. Um, the only other markings on the back that need to be transferred are the side seam pockets. So if you're making that, it's the same method of using the dots. So the methods I've taught you and shown you how to do using a combination of the tracing wheel with the transfer paper and the pencil to transfer all your marks can be used for the rest of your pattern pieces. So I've shown you the main ways to use them. Now you just need to go through and mark the individual pieces where they need to be marked and make sure you transfer all the marks from all the pattern pieces that you need to sew your garment together. If you're interested in making this garment, there will be more videos with the various parts coming up soon. And so stay tuned. And McCall's 8031 is available in stores today. If you wanna go pick it up wherever you buy patterns, you can sew along with me. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to click like and subscribe to my channel so you never miss a stitch. And if you've got questions, but no one to answer them, head on over to Let's Talk Sewing for Beginners hosted by Sew Sew Lounge. It's an interactive Facebook group where you can ask all the questions you want and I will get you some answers. Until we meet again, happy sewing. Mm -hmm.